Welcome back everyone for part two of lecture 13, where in this section we're going to talk about energy balances for closed and open systems, and we're going to, we're going to define enthalpy and state functions. Now, for our energy balance, we're actually going to go back to our general balance, where, as you remember when we were doing material balances, we had in minus out plus generation minus consumption equals accumulation. And we're, at, we're going to use that same concept for our energy balances. Now, one of the interesting features of having an energy balance is that some of these terms can be eliminated immediately. And those are, as you guessed it, the generation and consumption terms. We actually can eliminate those right off the bat because energy cannot be created nor destroyed. And for that reason, we don't have a generation or consumption term. And our balance simplifies to in minus out equals accumulation. And for us, our in term would be the heat coming into our system plus the work coming into our system. Our out term is the heat exiting our system and the work exiting our system. And our accumulation term is going to be the final energy level minus the initial energy level. So that's going to take into account the final internal energy, kinetic, and potential energy states minus the initial internal, kinetic, and potential energy states. And so for us, we're going to just write that as delta U plus delta EK plus delta EP. And if we substitute all these pieces into our energy balance equation, we will get delta U plus delta EK plus delta EP is going to equal Q in minus Q out plus W in minus W out. And we're going to just try and simplify that a little bit further by saying that Q is going to equal Q in minus Q out and W is going to equal W in minus W out. And we're going to finally get our, our energy balance for a closed system, which is delta U plus delta EK plus delta EP equals Q plus W. And in the, the, for the terms, we have delta U, delta EK, and delta EP indicating the energy possessed within our system, and Q and W are the, ener are the uh, forms of energy that are in transit. Now, as I just said, this is the energy balance for a closed system. And so something you may be wondering is, well, what is a closed system and how does that differ from an open system? Which is a great question to ask. So for us, a closed system is a system that has no mass entering or exiting the system boundaries. So we have nothing coming in nor coming out mass-wise. We can have heat or, or work entering or exiting, but no ma nothing with mass. An open system is therefore a system where we, we are open, we have mass that is entering and exiting the system, and it crosses our system boundaries. And by having this mass that's entering and exiting our system, it's going to change our energy balance a little bit. So now for our energy balance for an open system, we're going to have this equation. Okay, so that looks just the same as a closed, uh, a closed uh, closed system energy balance. The only thing is I have some circular accents on top of all my on top of all my variables. And what those circle accents indicate are that we have flow. So all of our all of our units are now going to be in energy per time rather than just energy because I have because all our, our all our energy is in motion. And because of this because of, because of that feature that we have mass in motion now, we actually have to modify our work term. Our work term is now going to be defined as WS plus WFL, where WS is our shaft work, and that's the work that's it's the same work as in our closed system. Because it's just the, the mechanical, it's the mechanical energy where you have some moving part. Uh, either inserting or dispensing energy. But we now, because we have an open system, have a new term, which is our flow work, which is equal to delta P V V dot. So it's the pressure times the volumetric flow rate. And the reason we now have flow work is because we have material entering and exiting the system. And for the flow work, as you, as you notice, the, the units look a little odd and you may wonder well, does that end, actually end up being a, a power term, right? An energy per time term. And it will be. It'll, it'll work out to that. And I just wanted to show you that the units will work out to give you watts. 
Now, I, you may still be wondering a little bit more about flow work and want to understand it a little bit better and why that actually will affect our energy balance. And I'm going to talk about that right now. So with our flow work, let's say we have, we have, uh, we have, okay, we have a, a, a pipe with water entering and water exiting. And the water entering is going to have a certain pressure and volumetric flow rate. The water exiting will have a different pressure and volumetric flow rate coming out. And so within the water, what ends up happening is that if you have this plug of water somewhere in your pipe, it's going to actually be pushing the water in front of it. That will now push water in front of it and will push water in front of it until you have work that is act that it, that until you have water that's exiting the system so the work is finally getting pushed out of the system so the the fluid is going to have work done on it by fluid behind it and so in that case that's our that is work coming in so it's pn times your volumetric flow rate in but then you also have work that performs or the fluid performing work on the surrounding system. So that's when you get to the edge of the pipe. That's the everything where the everything as your water is exiting the pipe. And so for that we have W out equals P out V out. And so as you as you remember with our sign convention, we said that any work that's entering our system is positive and any work that's exiting our system is negative. So for us to have positive flow work, we would be looking at P in times the volumetric flow rate in minus P out times the volumetric flow rate out. So for us, as we just said, we have our, our we've defined our flow work. However, most of the time when we talk about a, a we have a, a change in something, we always talk about the final minus the initial state. And so our delta P V dot is really going to be P out, P out, V out minus P in V, out, v in. So for us, in order to write our, our flow work in terms of a delta PV, what we will do is we'll write it as equal to negative delta PV. And we know that that's actually going to be our, our positive flow work. So if we substitute that negative PV term into the general balance for an open system, we will now have delta U plus delta EK plus delta EP equals Q dot plus W plus our shaft work minus our flow work. And for, and for us, what we can do is we can rearrange this, this equation. We can move the flow work term to the left-hand side. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to lump together our internal energy with our flow work. And by lumping it all together, we're going to get a new term, which is our enthalpy term. And so something to just keep in mind is that you will deal with internal energy for a closed system, and you will deal with enthalpy for an open system. And so for enthalpy, we're, there's a couple of ways we'll define it or use it. And so for enthalpy, we will have, we, we define it as the internal energy plus the flow work. And we can also talk about, uh, we can calculate enthalpy by looking at the mass flow rate coming into, the mass flow rate of our, our fluid multiplied by the enthalpy exiting the system minus the, the enthalpy coming into the system. And we can also use something called specific enthalpy, which is our specific internal energy plus the change in, in flow, the specific flow work. And our, our specific enthalpy is in terms of an enthalpy per mass. And that, that's where you're going to need that. That's why you need a mass flow rate to help us out with getting an actual enthalpy uh, quantity. Now, as I mentioned a little bit earlier in part one with internal energy, there's a challenge with working with internal energy and working with enthalpy, right? Internal energy is the energy contained within the system. We cannot measure the total energy, internal energy of a system. And therefore, we, can't, we also cannot measure the total enthalpy of the system, which makes things a little bit more challenging. But as we said before, we can try and define one state as a reference state saying it's zero and then just work around and look at the changes in our states. And, and we can do this because internal energy and enthalpy are state properties, where a state property, which is also called the state function, is the property of a system component whose value only depends on the state of the system, right? So it depends on the temperature, pressure, phase, and composition, and it does not matter 
how your system reached that state. And therefore, for our energy balances, we can look at the change in internal energy or the change in enthalpy to figure out how much energy is entering or exiting our system. And that's going to wrap up lecture, or not lecture, just part two of lecture 13, where we talked about our closed and open system energy balances, and we define enthalpy and state functions. And for part three, what we're going to do is go through some different practice problems with our energy balances. So looking forward to seeing you in part three. I'll see you soon.